refusing to go. If that's not enough, last week, Guatemala's Fuego vol- volcano erupted too. The volcano, whose name means fire, is one of Central America's most active. It is located near the colonial city of Antigua. Sunday's explosion rain set over the popular tourist destination, covering it in ash. The volcanic eruption spewed a river of red-hot lava and belched thick clouds of smoke nearly six miles into the air. There are about a dozen casualties and many injured. The evacuation will affect about 1.7 million people. Cool it, you crazy volcanoes. See what I did there? Cool it. And now, here are some more important stories you should know about. California's utility companies will spend nearly $768 million on charging infrastructure for electric cars trucks, and buses. The funds were approved by the California government last week. The programs are believed to be the largest state-level effort yet by the utility industry to encourage the adoption of electric vehicles. Governor Jerry Brown has set a goal of having 5 million zero-emission vehicles on California roads by 2030, a steep jump from the 369,300 pure electrics and plug-in hybrids now registered registered in the state. The programs unanimously approved Thursday focus on creating charging stations for electric trucks and buses. Pre- previously, they have focused more on cars. Transportation accounts for, for about 40% of California's greenhouse gas emissions, and state officials see electrifying heavy-duty vehicles as a way to fight both global warming and air pollution in one step, since regulators also expect much of the electricity to be generated by clean sources like solar power. And the programs represent an investment in the future. Scientists have discovered that frozen Pluto has wind-blown dunes made of methane sand. This landscape is both familiar and deeply weird. Part of the wonder of seeing new worlds is the difference from the planet you know. But if you know a little bit about the processes that shape our Earth, it's also cool to see those same processes play out under alien conditions. One familiar process is the formation of dunes. Large, repeating ridges of wind-blown sand can form in the desert, but they can also form as small ripples on the sandy stream bottoms or beaches. And we have seen those plenty of times on Mars, on Titan, and even on the comet 67P, despite its lack of substantial atmosphere. In a new paper, researchers working on the images for the New Horizon probe and another weirdo, to the list of the dune-bearing worlds, the dwarf planet Pluto. Obviously, Pluto looks a bit different from the sand sea of the Sahara. Hanging around, out around minus 230 Celsius, its surface is mainly covered with solid forms of substances we know as gas, like nitrogen and methane. With an atmosphere that is 100,000 times thinner than ours, it is hard to imagine winds pushing much of anything. But images of the edge of Pluto's heart-shaped plane in an area bordering a mountain range of what is probably water ice, the researchers were struck by a surface pattern that sure looks like dunes. This means that a trip to Pluto could include hiking shifting dunes while gritting sands of solid methane blow around your legs. Also facing to death. Still, it's a wild thought. Sudan was the world's last male northern white rhinoceros. He died on March 19th at the Old Paheta Conservancy. It is in Kenya, Africa. The world has been mourning his death. Sudan stole the hearts of many with his dignity and strength, said the Conservancy on its Facebook page. It is extremely hard to come to grips with the reality that he is gone forever. Thousands of northern white rhinos once roamed Africa. They were hunted nearly to extinction. People kill rhinos for their horns. The horns are used in medicines. They are also used in crafts. Now only two northern white rhinos remain. Both are female. They are Sudan's daughter and granddaughter. But conservationists still have hope for the species' future. They have been developing a new reproductive technique. It uses genetic material from dead northern white rhinos. Sudan has brought attention to the need for rhino conservation. If you can, consider making a donation to the World Wildlife Fund. Their efforts help protect endangered species like Sudan and the northern white rhinoceros. Legos are popular with kids, but making them can hurt the environment. 
Why? Legos are made of plastic. The plastic is made from oil. That is a non-renewable resource. Like natural ga gas and coal, there's a limited supply, and once it runs out, it's gone. And as you know, plastic can be bad for the environment because if it's thrown away, it doesn't break down easily. Now Lego is introducing earth-friendly pieces. They look like tiny leaves, bushes, and trees. They're made of plastic sourced from sugarcane. That is the sustainable material because you can grow more. The figures will appear in Lego sets this year. The little green pieces are part of a bigger plan for Lego. The company plans to use sustainable materials in all of its toys by 2030, according to Lego's Vice President of Environmental Responsibility. Yeah, they got one of those. The actions we take today can impact can have an impact on the planet of tomorrow. Every step and every action you do matters, he said. Way to go, Lego. A nine-year-old South Carolina boy is selling lemonade to help his sick baby brother raise nearly $6,000 in two hours last weekend. Andrew Emery wants to help his parents pay for the medical bills for his little brother, Dylan. The infant su suffers from crab disease, a rare and often lethal condition. So, on Saturday, Emery spent two hours at his truck dealership Southern Wheels in Greenwood, selling lemonade and hashtag Team Dylan t-shirts. He raised $5,860 to be added to $1,300 raised at a Friday benefit concert and $5,600 from a GoFundMe site for his brother. I'm going to spend it on doctor's bills and stuff and buy him a teddy bear too, Andrew reports. I just want to help Dylan. He's my baby brother. Dylan's mother and father are with him at a Pittsburgh hospital seeking medical care. Melissa Emery is updating her youngest son's condition on a Facebook page set up just for him. Andrew's mother said he has been thrilled from the start to have a younger brother and the fundraising is just an extension of the love he has for Dylan. It's really hard to explain to a nine-year-old what's happening. From the minute he found out he was going to be a big brother, he was in love with it, she said. I see every day that he's special and now everyone else can too. Andrew has been talking to his baby brother on video calls and has big plans for when he gets home, hopefully later this week. Calling all remote workers, Vermont has a deal for you. The state has a new law that will pay workers to move there and work remotely. Governor Phil Scott signed the legislation last week. Eligible workers can get up to $5,000 a year through the state's new remote worker grant program. The money can be used on expenses, including moving costs, necessary computer equipment and software, internet access, and co-working memberships. Vermont has a small and aging population. They recognize the need to recruit people to the state, and this is one of those efforts. The more, that people, the more people that live there and work there, the more tax money the state can raise to pay for the things they need. They are already getting in inquiries from workers, interested workers. To be eligible, a worker must be a full-time employee for an out-of-state business, working primarily from home, and become a full-time resident on or after January 1, 2019. Vermont is a beautiful state known for its trees and change that change color in the fall. It is close to New York and Boston with a lot of things to do all year round. Interested workers better act fast. Funds will be distributed on a first-come, first-served basis, and there are annual limits to the grants. A Good Samaritan is someone that is a helpful person. It pays to be a Good Samaritan when you're helping a famous rap star. Two weeks after a man stopped to help rapper Offset from his wrecked car, he thanked the man, Jamar Coleman, by buying him a new car. Thank you, Jamar, for helping save my life. He captured a Twitter photo of the two of them standing in front of a new Nissan Altima. The 26-year-old Offset, whose real name is Kiari Cephas, is a member of the group Migos. Migos' last two albums, Culture and Culture 2, both were certified platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America. When the Migos rapper wrecked his Dodge Challenger on May 17th in Atlanta, Jamar, who was walking to work, came to Offset's rescue and helped take him to a local hospital. Because he was walking, Offset thought he could use a new car. Offset shared a photo of his wrecked car on Instagram after the incident, saying, This is why I thank God every day. I could have been dead from this accident. Thank you all for your prayers. He also shared pictures of himself in the emergency room, with a neck brace, bloody mouth, and deep cuts on both of his arms. Nice work, Jamar. Hope you enjoy your new car. Hi, I'm Sean with this week's Brain Teasers. Last episode's primary brain teaser was, I'm a cold man without a soul. If there is warmth in me, it will slowly kill me. What am I? The answer was a snowman, and the winners are room 302, 211, and 305. 
Last episode's intermediate brain teaser was, a group of 10 people are going out for pizza, but only two of them have an umbrella to keep them dry. But they managed to walk all the way to the pizza place without getting wet. How is this possible? The answer was, it wasn't raining. And the winners are room 504, 407, 404, and 401, and room 505. Since this is the last Friday show of the year, we will not be giving you a brain teaser. But if you really want a brain teaser, go search it up on Google, because let's be real, that's where you get most of the answers. Hi, I'm Charlotte with your weather report. Today will be partly cloudy with a high of 73 degrees, a low of, a low of 56 degrees, and a 10% chance of rain. Tomorrow will be partly cloudy with a high of 69 degrees, a low of 51 degrees, and a 10% chance of rain. Sunday will be partly cloudy with a high of 74 degrees, a low of 54 degrees, and a 0% chance of rain. That's it for weather. In sports this week, Golden State leads Cleveland 3 0 in the NBA Finals. They look to complete a perfect sweep with the win in Cleveland tonight at 6. The Warriors have capitalized on the struggles of various Cavalier role players, such as J.R. Smith and Jordan Clarkson. Notable performances include LeBron James' 51 point game, Steph Curry's 33 point game 2, and Kevin Durant's 43 point game 1. In the MLB, the Giants are 31 and 31 after a 5 to 4 win over Arizona on Wednesday, placing them third in the NL West. They begin a series against the Nationals tonight at 4:05. Meanwhile, the, the Athletics are fourth in the AL West as they are also as they are also 31 and 31. They played the Kansas City Royals last night and play again tonight at 7.05. In soccer, the Earthquakes lost to Portland 2-0 on Wednesday in the fourth round of the U.S. Open Cup. They play LAFC on Saturday. That's all for sports. We hope you enjoyed the Friday show this week. This is our last Friday show of the school year. Yeah, I know. It's sad. We hope you enjoyed all the episodes that our crew of the Friday show produced for you this year. Before we leave, we would like to introduce our new hosts of next year, Pradi and Ananya. Hi, I'm Pradi. And I'm Ananya. We, we look forward to, to being, being your host next, next year. year. Thanks to all the sixth graders that helped produce the Friday show this year. That's all from us sixth graders this year. Bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs>